The story begins with a riddle. And riddles require answers. So at the end of the riddle, I will be expecting answers. Don't just sit there looking. Don't just sit there looking. So, <laughs> come tell me now, my chieftain's good, at Fingal's feast that be, what are the sounds that form for each the sweetest harmony? What are the notes that charm you most and send your cares to flight what sound most fills your inmost ear and fills you with delight? So there is an answer that you will get. Now, for the sake of translation, those of you whose Scots is not your first language, I am asking what sound fills your heart with delight. Don't think, call out the first thing you think of, which is... Yes, Turkish delight. I shall repeat for the camera. So we have Turkish delight. Is that right? Sometimes I miss here. And then the sound of sheep. The sound of sheep. <laughs> the sound of sheep is the sound of she, I will have you know. But yes, you are allowed the sound of she. Laughter. Bird song. Geese. The sound of the sea. Human song. The sound of the wind and clouds of bees. The words of John Lennon. The words of A.E. and William Butler Yeats. The wind in the trees. The wind in the willows. The wind in the willows. Now, this very rarely happens, but there is a specific answer of what Finn McCool and the Fianna love to hear most. And we are just going to see if we can channel this correct answer, which has never happened in the history of the universe since the she walked upon the earth. And it will be a sign, a sign it will be if you get it this night, a sign that tonight the presence will come to you. So, what is the sound that fills the sweetest harmony? It is the sound of... <laughs> Very close. Listen for just a moment, and what you hear is the sound that fills the sweetest harmony. It is the sound of whatever happens next. <laughs> Finn McCool and Fianna. They wander these lands from Bialtana till Samhain, but soon they will be looking for a home for the winter, a warm bed to lie in. Could this be your warm bed that this winter they will lie in? Just look around you and see whose bed is most welcoming. <laughs> there is a land beneath the waves, in this land there are valleys, as in our land. Silver streams run through them. The beaches are made of the dust of gold. And in the bottom of the silver rivers, all the gems of the world. This land beneath the waves reveals itself when the sea is calm. And so, one day, Finn McCoo and the Fianna, on the beach just here, sat looking. And was there not that world beneath the waves that they saw? But then they saw coming towards them a boat. And was this boat upon the waves or beneath it? They could not tell. It came closer and they saw within the boat the most beautiful woman they had ever seen in their lives. She stepped upon the shore and Phil McCoodle greeted her. Fair maiden, you are welcome here. What race are you from and what brings you here? 
Ah, she said, I have searched beneath all the suns to find Finn McCool and his warriors. And I am the daughter of the king of the land beneath the waves. I seek the help of Finn McCool. If this is your purpose, then a great day this is for us, said Finn McCool. For I am Finn McCool, and these are the Fianna. What and how can we serve you? Ah, said the beautiful maiden, there is a dark prince of storm chases me even yet. He would make me his bride and steal my kingdom from my father. He is the white king of the red shield, and he even approaches now. Ah, said Finn McCool and Athena, what shall we do? And they answered with one voice. They answered with one voice, we shall help you all. <laughs> <clears throat> there are cues every now and then. You have to be at home as well, I expect you shouting out, you know. So, with one voice they shouted, we will. <laughs> with one voice they shouted, we will. <laughs> Going to be a long night, I can tell. <laughs> Just then, a shadow fell upon the land. On the horizon, a giant appeared, rising upon a horse of the ocean. Closer and closer he came. The wind whipped the sea to violence. The warrior stepped ashore. The Fianna were ready for the fight. Gold, the oldest warrior, and Oscar, the youngest, drew their swords to greet him. But he walked straight past them and approached Finn, who was unarmed. Gaul was so furious, he took his first spear and threw it. It split the dark Prince of Storm's warrior shield. A second spear Gaul threw and slew the horse of the dark warrior. So incensed was the warrior by this act that he immediately demanded 50 of the Fianna fight him single-handed. That's your job, get the swords out, fighting time. <laughs> and at home. All the long day they battled, but as sunset came, Gaul began, began to gain the upper hand and slew the warrior. And then a calm fell upon the sea again. The land beneath the waves appeared. I am grateful to you forever, said the maiden. Now, Finn McCool, will you take me home in my boat? And so they sailed again across the sea till they came to the isle with a great sea cave that provides the link between our world and the land beneath the waves. They sailed into this place and as they descended underground, the woman turned to Finn McCool and said, I leave you here. I return by myself. You must not come with me. But Promise me, if ever I am in need of help again, you will send you or one of your Fianna to help me. Finn McCool promised and took the boat back to his land. A year and a day passed, and then again a boat was seen upon the horizon. It is the maiden returned, said the Fianna, but no, said the sharp-sighted one, it is a man this time, who came to the beach and said to the Fianna, you remember your promise, I am a messenger from the princess of the land under the waves. She lies sick, dying. Will you send Dermot to heal her? Dermot, son of Angus Og, one of the great healers of the world, he got into the boat and sailed off with the messenger. They came to the sea cave. They descended down and came to a great plain. As they crossed the plain, they would come to clumps of red sphagnum moss. Three times Dermot plucked the moss, put it in his bag. And then they came to a great palace, and upon the great palace there was a terrible sadness, for the princess lie in her bed, nearly dying. But such is the power of Dermot, that just his touch will restore health into the person for a brief time until a cure can be found. And Dermot did this, and the princess, her eyes filled with joy and life again. 
said, Dermot, I have brought these three clumps of moss. Put them in water, drink it, and you will be healed. Ah, said the princess, would that it were so easy, for the only water I can drink must come from the cup of healing from the king of the plain of wonder. Said Dermot, I have never heard of this cup. How may I find it? How may I find it? Ah, said the princess, it lies in another kingdom. None may go there and return. I must lie here now and die. No, no, said Dermot, there is no place in this world beneath any sun. No man will stop me to gain this cup for you. Is this kingdom close to here? It is close but far, said the princess. It is the neighboring kingdom that lies across a river. I will cross that river, find the cup of the king of plain of wonder, and bring it back to you to heal you. And a joy again was in the palace. A joy again was in the palace. <laughs> the people knew hope again. Diarmid went to the river. It was but a short distance, but across a strange plain. And when he came to the river, such was the nature of the river, he knew he could not cross. So long had hope filled his heart, but now he knew only despair. When a little brown man popped up from the riverbank, Ah, Dermot, you're in sorry straits now. I am indeed, said Dermot. What, said the little brown man, would you give me if I was to help you? I would give you, said Dermot, anything that you would ask of me. Well, said the little brown man, all I will ask of you is your good will, and I will carry you across the river. Dermot laughed. How can you cross me, carry me across this river, little man that you are? Ah, said the little brown man, let us try. And he picked up Dermot, and his shoulders expanded. He took his hands, and they grew, and then his feet grew, and he walked across the water. And as they walked across the water, they came to an island with a dark mist about it. What, said Dermot, is that place? Ah, it is the Isle of the Dead. None may touch that ground of mortal form and live. And they crossed to the other side. And then the little brown man said to Dermot, Is it the cup of wonder you would be searching for? Yes, it is, said Dermot. May you get it said the little brown man. And Dermot was about to ask another question when he realized the man had vanished. So now he was in the land beneath the mountains, also known as the Plain of Wonder. And here there was light everywhere, but no sun. But brightness followed Dermot as he walked across the plain till he came to a great castle. He blew his horn to gain admittance, and a great warrior came out at once to confront him, and Dermot slew him at once with his spear. Then the king came out and said, Crossly, who has slain my best warrior? Here, let's have a line. Who has slain my best warrior? <laughs> your cross, let your cross, let's hear it. Who has slain my best warrior? I am Dermot, son of Angus Og, said the king of the Plain of Wonder. Why did you not tell me that you were coming? Gladly would I have let you in, but now you have killed my best warrior. Of no account, said Dermot. Do you not have the cup of the Plain of Healing within? I will give it to your warrior, and he will be reborn. That is true, said the king. The cup only works in the hand of Angus Og or his descendants. And so it was, the cup was brought out. Dermot put it to the mouth of the warrior, who drank a few sips and then gulped the whole cup down and sprung back to life. Well, now, said Dermot, I must take the cup, for I have a woman to heal with it. Well, said the king of Plain of Wonder, you are welcome to the cup, but there is no healing in it anymore, as all the water is gone. Aww. Very good, you're learning, I'm impressed. <laughs> Dermot, he prepared to leave, and the king of the Plain of Wonder said, would you like a boat to help you cross back across the river? 
And Deirdre had said, no, I have no need of a boat. And he returned to the riverside, and little brown man sprang up again and said, ah, Dermot, you're in a sore, sorry strait again. I am that, said Dermot. Never mind, said the little brown man, climb up upon my back once more. And they walked across the water, straight towards the Isle of Dead. Why are we going to the Isle of Dead, said Dermot. Here is the well that you can fill your cup from, said the little brown man. But, said Dermot, should I touch the isle, I will die. Yes, you would, but fear not, I can touch the island, and I will bring you close to the well so you can dip the cup in. And this the little brown man did. He spread his body upon the land. Dermot dipped the cup into the water, and he carried him back over to the other side. <laughs> now, said the little brown man, let me give you a little bit more advice. When you heal the daughter of the king of the land beneath the waves, he will offer you anything you desire. He will offer you silver, gold, and the hand of his daughter in marriage. Should you wish to remain in the land beneath the waves, you may accept this gift. But should you wish to return to your people, but for a short time, you should not accept his gifts, but ask rather for a boat. Now, here's a question to the men in the audience. You have the chance to marry the most beautiful woman in the world, receive large quantities of gold and silver, but never see your male warrior friends again. What are we going to choose, men? Are we going to choose our brothers and warriors? Or are we going to choose the most beautiful woman in all the world? <laughs> Who chooses to be with their warrior brothers? And who's choosing the most beautiful woman in the land beneath the waves? So, <laughs> so that's, that's great, but unfortunately, you don't get to hear the end of the story because it ends here for you. <laughs> you never get back. You never, no, it's fair. You can stay. You can stay. <laughs> Just remember what choice to make. So, Dermot returned to the palace. He had the cup of healing, he had the three pieces of sphagnum moss, he gave them to the princess of the land beneath the waves, she drank the water, she was healed. Yeah. And then the king said to Dermot, great is the service you have done me. I will give you gold, I will give you silver, I will give you the hand of my daughter in marriage. Yes, said Dermot, but should I accept this, will I be able to return to my families? No, you will not, said Dermot. No, you will not, said the king. You must choose. I choose, said Dermot, a boat. Give me a boat and I will return to my world. But before he went, the king touched Dermot upon the forehead. A mark appeared there. The princess said to Dermot, great is the joy you have brought me to my heart. I give you my blessing and I send you home. And Dermot, he returned with the boat to this world, coming back up through the cave. He came on his boat across the sea, where Finn McCool and Athena were sitting, watching the land. They were amazed to see him, for it had been seven long years since Dermot had left. They told him this, and they asked him of his adventures, and they asked him about the spot upon his forehead. This meant nothing to the men, but it means much to women. But this is another tale. But should you ever see Dermot with the spot upon his forehead, you will immediately and uncontrollably fall in love with him and desire to keep him in your bed, not just all winter, but for all time to come. <laughs> So in the following weeks, should such a man come to you, perhaps wearing a hat upon his head, as Dermot was forced often to do, <laughs> you may find yourself with someone to keep you warm the winter long. 
But when the spring season draws nigh, he will mount once more upon his horse and ride away, as warriors and men are wont to do. And thus begins another story. Thank you very much.